a stellar cast list made up with some of the biggest names in triathlon gathered in Ibiza for the first event of the PTO season and a chance to be crowned the PTO European Open champion. As with all these things, expectations were high and it certainly didn't disappoint. Hello and welcome to the beautiful Spanish island of Ibiza for the inaugural PTO European Open. A 100k race made up of 2k in the water, 80k on the bike and finished off with an 18 km run. Later on we'll see how world number one Ashley Gentle fared in the ladies race as she took on the likes of Lucy Charles Barkley, Paula Findlay and Daniela Reef. But first up is the battle of the Olympians as Jan Frodeno, now free from injury, tested his mettle against double Olympic winner Ali Brownlee and current champion Christian Blumenfeld. We are racing here for the first European Tour ever, the first race of the PTO Tour. And the gun has gone off. Nice conditions here in the swim, Helen. It is a two kilometer race, two laps at the Figueratus Beach. Well protected, no surf expected. I think it's about a 21 degree water temperature as well. And they're fast at the start. Yeah, it's a beautiful swim and it's in the ocean. So although this is not affected by waves, I'd say those that um, are used to swimming in the sea, they're comfortable in the ocean, they may have an advantage here today. We know someone like Jan Fredino, He's uh, he likes surfing, he spent a lot of time in Australia in the past. This could be a great start for him. Olympic gold medalist, three-time Ironman world champion, twice the world champion at 70.3 distance as well. There's not a lot that he hasn't seen and done in this sport, but a long time out. And he lives for the competition. He's been thirsting for the opportunity to get in there and test himself against some of these young guns like the Norwegians. Of course, we have Christian in the field today. And just let them know, remind them why he is considered the greatest of all time. Yeah, and I think this it really inspires him. He's, he's been out for a long time, but this is really motivating. The fact that he's got this battle, he's coming back. I mean, he's done everything there is to do in the sport, but the fact he's still so fired up. And I think this versus Christian Blumenfeld versus Alistair Brownlee, this has got him back and hopefully got him back in really good shape. Jan Fredino out in front at the moment, coming back. It is a two lap course Aussie exit, which means they'll exit the water. Quick dash, I think it's about 50 meters across, and then they'll dive back into the water to come back in for that final lap. We have now got a front group moving away, which is what these fast swimmers wanted. And why is that important as we progress through the race? Uh, well, the fast swimmers, they know Christian Blumenfeld is the fastest runner and the aim is to get as much time as possible on him. Yeah, that looked like Aaron Royal to me, who was out in front with Jan Frodino in second. As they're coming across now for the, the Aussie exit. We're looking for athletes like Daniel Backgaard to be up there as well, another really good swimmer. Yeah, there's so we see that Aaron Royal is leading them out. Frodeno, Brownlee on his feet. Carl Smith right up there as well. Salvesberg, he was a late, um, late starter to the race. He's right up there coming from that short course background. He does have that good swim ability. Florian Anger, great swim for him. And obviously very strong on the bike. And that's what it's going to set up. Those guys that can stay with that front pack, Helen, who are uber bikers, it's going to be so important for them. 
Yeah, and there's key there. We saw Christian Blumenfeld is 28 seconds back, so he's lost 28 seconds in the first lap. He's really going to want to minimise that and try not to know. The great thing about an Aussie exit is he might have someone there shouting at him when he comes through what his time gap is. And he's around a few good athletes. He can maybe use those to get back up to the front and really try and get as close as possible on that swim. And I think it's worth putting you guys at home in the picture. For those that didn't know, he had, uh, it's just been a, a succession of injuries and setbacks. And I think it started with an Achilles tear that led to a knee injury. Then he had a crash. Then there was sepsis. And as to your point, sitting on the sideline, watching everything unfold, obviously the introduction of the PTO, the 100 kilometer race distance and the, the competitive nature of this. And it really sounds like his absence has imbued him with a sense of gratitude. And he's almost reconfiguring the way that he looks at professional competition now. We can see Aaron Royal now is just, just leading. Like this is what he's wanted in the last few PTO opens. We haven't seen it. He's he's been at the front, there's been a large group, larger group, but he's managed to stretch out the swim and that group is going away. So this is the perfect swim scenario for an athlete like Aaron Royal. So we can see Aaron Royal, Jan Fredino, Alistair Brownlee, Carl Smith, Andreas Salvisberg, Florian Angert, Thomas Bishop in there as well, number seven. I mean, you were talking uh, about him as maybe someone to look out for. That is a really good position for him to be in, just eight seconds back off the front. So all of these boys will be on your left as they bring it in. They're coming out the water very, very shortly, and we will see them dash into T1. And then they have to follow the relevant protocols before they, they get on the bike for that, Helen. I think you can talk us through because sometimes the difference between short course and long course racing, the transition, take, there's certain rules and regs that you need to abide by. And some of the long course racers, or those that have been out for a while, might not get it right. No, uh, we'll see the difference in a short course athlete and an and Ironman athlete tend to be in transition. And just the speed is coming out the swim. If you've done short course racing, you, it's full on. You're out the swim and you're sprinting to your bike and it's really fast. So sometimes there's a bit of difference in the speed, but that athletes might want to put on extra things. Sometimes they'll put on something in transition now, but everyone has to get that wetsuit off, goggles, hat. They have to go into the box next to the bike. If that equipment does not go into the box, they could be hit with a penalty. So we see Aaron Royal there in picture now. Yeah, the two-time Olympian. We'd expect him to be fast through transition. There we go, there's Matt Newman as well. Jan Fredin is already heading out. That's going to have to be a fast transition there for Newman to get onto the back of this group. Alistair Brownlee here heading as well. out. You yeah, can hear, you can the, hear the cheers. We've got Kyle Smith heading out there as well. Interestingly, Kyle Smith, training partner of Jan Fredino. I'm wondering if those two might be uh, willing to work together a little bit on the bike. That's not a bad bit of rub to have, is it? No, it's not bad at all. There's Daniel Backgaard heading out. Tom Bishop. So I'm just hearing that the rest of the, the swimmers are not yet out of the water. The next is now out that 40 seconds back. That's a really big gap to open up. That's uh, a long time uh, to be behind. Good swim there from Jason West. He's leading kind of that second group. Blumenfeld there, minute down. So. That's a bit of time to make up. See Ditlev at a minute 10. That's not a bad swim for him. I don't think that's that's too bad for him. He, he would expect to be around a minute. He didn't lose too much time over that second lap. And we're just getting some information that Frederick Funk has an issue with his bike in transition right now. That is a nightmare start to the bike leg for him. Yeah, I did see them doing something to his bike. I wasn't sure what was going on, but yeah, you can see he's still stood there by his bike. There he oh, is there heading he is out, so I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe a flat or a problem with the gears. Really unfortunate for him. Worth saying at this point that we have Race Ranger in play as well, which is going to help with the drafting. Let us know a bit about drafting in this style of racing. So the closer you are to the athlete in front, the easier it is for the athlete. You, you do get an advantage. So today they're using Race Ranger. So it's basically a traffic light system that the athletes have on their bike. They'll see lights on the bike and they have to be 
further than 20 metres behind. So it makes it a lot more fair. That 20 metre draft zone is a really good distance. Uh, there's less, a lot less advantage with 20 metres and using race ranger today is hopefully going to make this race a lot more fair. And we've heard from a lot of the athletes, they've mentioned it in their pre-race interviews, they're really excited that we're using this technology today. And that is the, the white disc that you might see on the back. There are two discs, in fact, on the bikes. One, obviously, to pick up the, 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 the I guess they work between one another, and the one at the back, then you're, you might start seeing some, some lights coming out. But what have we got here? Got that transition there. A little bit. Oh, yeah, Jan Frodeno just struggling there with that jump onto his bike. See, oh, the no others way. have all run a little bit further up the hill and quite smoothly jumped on, but Jan jumped on at the bottom of the hill. You can see there the shake of the head. He's uh, not happy with himself. I feel like it's so interesting how this race will play out because I think everyone knows what Alice is going to do. Go to the front, go hard. And then I think if you want to go all in and win this race, you've got to go with the pace. You've got to go with that hard bike pace and really go for it. But so often on the PTO races, we just see people exploding on the run because they've spent all their matches on the bike. So it's a really tactical game, a really big game of knowing yourself, kind of sticking to your plan. What powers do you want to push? It's uh, yeah, there's so much going on in your head. It's not just simply getting on there and riding. In a way, what Alistair Brownlee is doing is easier. To the front, go hard, and that's all you have to do. I'd say that's uh, easier than playing it from further behind. Ditlev, look at that, 55 kilometers an hour. And even Blumenfeld is finding some pace as well, faster than Brownlee. And that translates into miles an hour for you as well, and the old money. As Ditlev passes another, he passes Daniel Beckergaard. The fellow Dane. Yeah, that's, I mean, you can just see there how fast it loves moving, and that's why his pace is so high. He's making all of these passes, but hard for Daniel Backgaard as well. He really needs to keep his head in the game when something like that happens and not let it affect you. Keep kind of riding to your own pace because you don't want to get demoralized this early on in the bike. And that is Kyle Smith assuming the lead, getting some work in at the front. He is right there in front here at the Ibiza PTO European race and he's looking strong. I think this, the, the dynamic is going to change. We see there that gap there. Ditlev is now at 40 seconds, Blumenfeld 46. So that's when the dynamic of this front group might change when Ditlev gets to the front, Tom if he Bi gets to the front. <laughs> yes. Tom Bishop working with uh, Dan Bingham. I hope he can get his legs for uh, some, some serious power to bring it home. Yeah, Dang Bingham is a, has held the world record on the track for the hour record. So excellent at uh, getting that aerodynamic position dialed in, which is what Tom's been working on over the last, um, last couple of months. Doing a lot of work on his run mechanics as well. I was listening to some of the podcasts he's been doing and hasn't been kind, the weather uh, back in the UK hasn't been kind to him. But sometimes you just got to push through it. So we are in the third lap of the bike leg and the nine are in the lead group within about 17 seconds of one another as well. As we see Aaron Royal, who I'm not sure we expected to be right there in the middle of that that front pack, but he's riding hard here, still in that third lap. Yeah, Aaron Royal's in a good position uh, in the front group, so that's a positive for him. He rode really well in his race in Gran Canaria two weeks ago. He's faded on the run, was a bit disappointed with that, but it's it's early in the season. He feels like that was a kind of getting the getting the first race out of the way and hopefully coming here more prepared. But Alistair Brownlee there looking uh, really smooth. And I think third lap, they'll know now Ditlev is on the back of the group and what's going to happen on this lap. This is the lap where we could see someone trying to go off the front of the group. The women's race is just about to get going and we are racing with the women as well. Analysts and fans have been celebrating this lineup as maybe the best ever. Ash Gentle, of course, looking to maintain her top spot in the PTO rankings and her 100% tour record. Can Daniela Reef prove once again she's the one to beat? And of course, Lucy Charles Barkley, an elite swimmer we're expecting to 
get out there ahead of the rest of the field. So many storylines, a lot to be excited about. And now the women and the men are on the course. It's all go, 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 Helen. It's all go, go, go. And I get those race nerves, even just watching them line up on the start. And my heart rate just goes up. And straight away, you see that silver cap of Lucy Charles Barkley straight to the front. You can see she's on the arrowhead closer to the screen. Yeah, we've got two packs, actually. So we had Ben Canute that was, I think, the lonesome staying out left. But a few of the women have decided to do that. A yeah. couple before, sorry, Helen. We got looking out for the orange cap of Gentle, silver of Charles Barkley, Paula Finley's in the teal, Daniela Reef in the yellow, and Annie Haug is in the red. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just saying that I think the favourites all kind of lined up on the right of the beach as they were looking at the beach. And then some of the lower ranked athletes, but maybe with a good swim, went far left. And they're just trying to get some clear water and get as close to that front as possible. But it's a tough ask when Lucy Charles Barkley's in the race. But we, we spoke about uh, the, the drafting, of course, with the bike. But you, you can get a little draft on the hip and on the toes of, as well in the water. And that is permitted, of course. Yes, that is permitted. And it's so much easier. Like the amount of energy you save tucked in behind someone on the feet or even on the hip is, in, is absolutely incredible. But I think the problem for the women is they've got to be able to get to Lucy. She is that good a swimmer. We've seen a couple of races where athletes have come out close to her. We've seen um, Beck Clark from New Zealand. She's got close but it's really tough to get close to her and with the wetsuits today people do have more of a chance but I think this is one of the certainties that Lucy will be out front so we're gonna take a look over at the men's race and it's Max Newman who is now leading out the men on the bike yeah that's a big move there from Max Newman we've got Max Newman, Kyle Smith, Alistair Brownlee, they are in a group of three. They have 20 seconds over Magnus Ditlev at the last check. So, yeah, it's all happening at the front of that race. So, as I said a little earlier on, our social team are hot on this race as well. So, if you've got a spare tablet or phone to put up by the side of your screen so you can listen to us, of course, but you can check in with what's going on elsewhere in the field. There is a blog that the social team are, are working on. And of course, you'll have the tracker as well to keep, a, keep an eye on your favorite athletes. You see there in the women's swim, there is a couple of people around Lucy Charles Barkley. It's always hard from the angle from the beach to see what that gap is. But the women do seem to maybe having a bit of trouble sighting. There is, they're going off in different directions. So someone is obviously on a better line than someone else. We'll, we'll know when they come in for that Aussie exit and the athletes get a good look at each other and see exactly where they are. Oh, there's Ditlev as well. He's passing. Uh, that's he's passing Aaron Royal. And Aaron Royal's out the saddle. Ditlev just turning those legs over. Yeah, it's so smooth, in control. And he, ha but he has got a gap now. There is open road in front of him to that front group of three. It's not a very big gap, but there is a gap there. So things definitely hotting up on the bike as the conditions get choppy out on the water around some of the beautiful beaches here in Ibiza. So early, I mean, we're into the, into the bike quite heavily now. So early thoughts on how you think that Jan Fredino and, and Alistair Brownlee are shaping up? I'd say as expected, both swimming and riding well. And traditionally, because they've both had injuries, they've been lower leg injuries, they would still have had the ability to probably swim and ride as much as they wanted. It's going to be the run where that form really tells. But the fact that up there really driving the pace, I think shows that they've, they've definitely got that fire there. And it, it's just all going to come down to the run. But they put themselves in the best position to win. We've, they put themselves in the best position to have this kind of battle that we've all been talking about. And under 15 kilometers to go to transition for the men. Back in the water, and Lucy Charles Barkley, as expected. A signature swim from her, just under 23 minutes into the swim. We're going to take a pause from the action here. We're going to send it down to our colleague Vicky, who's in transition. Yeah, I'm here with Reese Barkley down here in transition. We've not got long now before we see Lucy come through. 
Rhys, you've been doing a little bit of pacing up and back. Is it nerve-wracking waiting for your wife? You're an athlete yourself. What's more nerve-wracking, the, the, the supporting or the racing? Uh, for sure, supporting is far more nerve-wracking than when I race myself. Uh, yeah, I've been pacing up and down. I think Lucy's just coming out of the water now. So, yeah, she's had a good start. Um, wetsuit swim, so it makes the, uh, the group much closer together. But yeah, it looks like she's off to a really good start. She's still got a decent gap, and I guess that really is business as usual for Lucy. We were expecting that. So nothing to see here, really. The wetsuit swim, does she mind that? Um, I think she prefers a non-wetsuit because it makes the gaps bigger. But she also swims very fast in a wetsuit. So yeah, I think it's, um, it's, it's probably early, too early in the season for non-wetsuit swims. But for sure, later on, it starts warming up. It'll be wetsuit swims all round. Well, just behind you here, we're turn and have a look and see Lucy coming into her transition spot. Let's just see how she deals with this. So just a small fumble of the suit there, but that was pretty smooth. Pretty smooth all around there. Just a little, a little bit of a fumble there. Yeah. Will she be pleased with that? Do you think? Uh, I don't think she'll be thinking too much about that. She'll just be concentrating on getting up the road and settling in. Probably thinking a little bit about putting on some nutrition that she's lost in the swim um, and settling down. Probably that's the most nerve-wracking point coming from swim uh, onto the bike. So the adrenaline will be pumping, and she'll just settle down into a rhythm now and hopefully have some good legs on the bike. So. Lucy exited the water 24-19, but her husband Reese there saying that T1's the more nervy transition. Is that the same for everyone? Uh, if you're wearing a wetsuit, yes, because you've got that stress of getting the wetsuit off. I actually thought Lucy's wetsuit came off really fast, which is good. Sometimes you get the feet stuck in, it's just a bit of a panic. But she was really smooth and calm, even though a couple of things went wrong. I think she really kept her cool. But now she's onto the bike and just doing what Lucy Charles Barkley does. And that's really pushing the pace. And those athletes behind, they're going to have to work very hard to get to her. That group is, um, you know, a minute 30 down. There's two athletes at 30 seconds, pretty much 30 seconds, and then a minute 30. It's a big gap already. As Lucy Charles Barkley looks to come out of the tunnel, remembering that it's a four loop bike course. And look, T2 now for the men. This is going to be very interesting indeed. We're talking transition. Who gets it down the smoothest? And uh, again, we have to consider, you know, keeping a tidy transition here. Everything goes in the box. 40 seconds ahead of the chase group. There's Ditlev there just putting his bike in. Kyle Smith heading out. First out, Kyle Smith. Good transition. See that short course practice. Ditlev just struggling a little bit with that shoe. Gone with no socks, interestingly. Some of them have socks on, some don't. Max Newman as well, just a little bit slower. Kyle Smith really got a good few seconds advantage there. Very fast through transition. And forgive me, I don't, have I have we seen Brownlee? Yeah, yes. Brownlee's there just in front of Smith. Oh, he flew through. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's ahead of Smith or he's, he's passed him already, but they were, they were both pretty close. Maybe that short course background coming into play where every second really does count in transition. And there is Christian Blumenfeldt coming into transition. He's got a bit of work to do on the run. He's going to know he's got to pull back that gap. They've got 40 seconds up the road. See there, that's Aaron Royal just getting ready. Tom Bishop sat down. He always sits down in transition. That's not something wrong. It just uh, saves his hamstrings cramping. Picture on your left, already in the streets of Ibiza, the old town. Wonderful sights. Expecting lots of... Well, we see there already lots of support for these top athletes. And Fredeno and Blumenfeld running out together, <laughs> side Perfect. by side out of G2. Love it. Exactly what we wanted. I'm not sure it's exactly what they all wanted, but we did hear earlier this week that Jan Fredeno was jesting. I'm, I'm going to wait around for you on the run, Christian. 
I'm not sure about your times. I, th I think it's going to be a, you know, a good race for me. Yeah, Smith here, he's, he's managed to get back up to Alistair Brownlee. Interesting to see whether he's going to sit on his shoulder or, or try and make the pass, but he has uh, just gained that couple of metres and moved up. Alistair Brownlee doing exactly what he did in the Canadian Open, though, leading from the front. And here, of course, is Alistair Brownlee slowing down. Oh, no. He's he really wanted to make sure he got that drink, and that's really smart there. He doesn't want to lose that nutrition. Yeah, good pace for Alistair Brownlee as we pull back and have a view of the port. Would have lost a few seconds there by making that stop there. I mean, he'd slowed to try and grab some nutrition. I don't actually know if there was anything in it. It looked like he shook it and threw it. So um, I'm not sure what went on there. So hopefully he manages to get something later on in the course if he has missed something. As we go back into the women's race, bottom left, Lucy Charles Barkley, but Paula Finley known for her strong bike. She's making moves. She is making moves. She's now 1 minute 29 behind Lucy Charles Barkley, but she's made up a good, I think it's over a minute now. So Fastest really, bike split. yeah, she's really moving well through the field. What a move this is. Max Newman running side by side with Alistair Brownlee. They are the front runners in the race. The legend has company at the front. And it'll be interesting to see how this affects his race now. Was he expecting to see Max Newman on his shoulder? Does it matter? Yeah, it's hard to know, isn't it? I think, um, I think Max Newman wasn't like one of the big names coming in, but he's had that really strong, consistent results and probably not one of the big names, maybe because he just doesn't put himself out there as much as some of the others. He's not big on social media. He's not got his own YouTube channel. So there isn't just as much information about him, but he's come here. He's really prepared. And there we see there his stats. Fifth in the swim, 16th bike, third on the run. Is it? looking like a real threat at the moment 2022 or a few indicators of what he might be able to bring into this season at both uh, you know full iron distance and at 70.3 but he is underlining that at the moment by this performance today helen as he strides side by side with alistair brownlee well in fact it's not any longer side by side he has taken the lead Oh, so Sarah perez just coming back past now. So this is, uh, I suppose, where it gets a bit just more congested on the course and the athletes really have to be careful with, they don't want to get any drafting penalties. So sitting back and, and uh, making sure they drop back at the right time. And this is where um, Paula Finley would ideally just be passing people and just keeping on going and, and not having to worry about any of this going on. But Sarah perez feeling strong and willing to retake the lead from Paula Finley. Final lap, 27 seconds ahead of Christian Blumenfeld. The time you see is the last one at the timing, Matt. And it is all about biting down and turning those legs over. What an outstanding performance here from Newman. Here in Ibiza, the first leg of the PTO Tour. A fantastic destination attended by truly some of the world's best in both the men's and the women's field a stunning backdrop for a wonderful race and there is the man the number one ranked christian blumenfeld and i think this is so it's so cool for a fan we're getting to see him run at full pace pelt as well because he's he's chasing you know if he's off the front and he's got a few minutes he doesn't have to run to his full ability but he's chasing so we're seeing like this is the best Christian Blumenfeld can do. He's really putting everything out there. So to really try and get back to that first position. And I read a, a uh, 220 triathlon article about his coach hiring a voice coach for Christian Blumenfeld. He reckons it's improved his VO2 max and he belongs to a choir. Apparently he can, he can belt out a tune and it's, he's getting even more powerful with it. But it just goes to show you the areas that that team are looking to exploit to try and get any kind of marginal gain. 
yeah, that no stone unturned approach. But at the moment, Max Newman is beating that approach. He's well in front. He's still got to last, uh, heading up onto that last lap. He had a 23 second lead or 26 second lead, I think it was. So it could be close with the speed Christian Blumenfeld is moving. Blumenfeld talks about the pressure, the level of expectation but he has to adopt that training mindset to deliver his race. And also looking to deliver their best race, Lucy Charles Barkley. Every time we come to her, I feel like she's just exiting the tunnel there. Yeah, I know, she's in the tunnel. And she's still um, she's still ahead, one minute 16 ahead of the chasers. That chase group includes Sarah Perez-Sala, Paula Findlay, Ashley Gentles there, Lottie Vilms is there, Fenella Langridge, India Lee, <laughs> it's a big group, Rebecca Clark, and then there's the gap. So we've got Lucy Charles, seven in the main group, and then there's a bit of a gap to athletes like Holly Lawrence, Daniela Reef. 1.5 kilometers to go before we will see the champion here at the PTO Tour Europe. Oh, 19 seconds. That's that's a lot in one and a half kilometers. That is a really, I, I've said- Can he do Chris, it? <laughs> I said Christian Blumenfeld has a good finish, but that's a big finish. That would require Max Newman to blow, I think, and Christian Blumenfeld to really? have the best 1.5k. Oh, yeah, I don't want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't make me call it. Well, he's achieved many great feats, but it looks like we have a new star in the making. Newman out there with 19 seconds. Matt Newman from Australia. He, he lives in Brisbane. Brother Mitch is his coach. 27 years old. He's had a good, he's had a good season down under. Yeah, really good. The last good. race, he was first in hell of the West, hell of the West. He was first at Ironman Western Australia, fourth in Kona. There we can see him. He's in the distance. And this is the beauty of these laps. Well, at some point, are we? Hopefully, we're going to see them cross one another. Uh, that's when you have to look good. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> really we will look see good. it. There's the Whether turn. They've got the glasses on, so they won't be able to see in each other's eyes. But they'll have a little check of each other's form. Oh, it's going to be close. Oh, it's this is tense. That is super close. Really close. And Max, <laughs> I mean. For a guy like Max Newman, I'm sure you've got a superstar in Christian Blumenfeld running you down. Like, again, does your heart skip a beat? You know, does, does it, does the competitor in you like dial in a little bit more, the devil come out? I think you're, you're running scared, but you've, you've also got to back yourself. You've got to keep positive in your head. You've got to keep positive. You can't give up for a second. You can't let that thought come in that it's Christian Blumenfeld. And second would be fine. Second's still a good pay. You just can't let it come in. You have to keep focused on the finish. Max Newman has a, a really good resume. Six half distance wins. He's got four Ironman wins as well. So he's proven over both distances. As we've said, did a, a brilliant performance in Kona uh, last year. Loves it in Ironman Cairns. Yeah, and, and the races he's had down in Australia, they have been ridiculously fast. I mean, we're talking small fields, so maybe it's ignored a little bit. Maybe it's not focused on or dismissed because it's just one of the kind of earlier Australian races or earlier New Zealand races, but they've been really fast times. Uh, but that means he needs to have confidence in his own run and doing this, running out front, dis despite what everyone else is doing, I'm on my own path, I'm on my own race and I'm going to achieve. Yeah, and I think he's picked up the pace here. He's looking really strong at this finish. There's a grimace now yeah. across the face of Max Newman as well. I think he's putting in time. Maybe he's gone part, maybe he's dropped to Christian Blumenfeld a little bit. Well, this is exciting. Gone, I think it got down to 19, but now it's gone back to 20. I mean, it's only a second difference, but it's it shows how strong, it shows how strong Max Newman is running out front. And there's Christian Blumenfeld right now. It is between those two. Ditlev, a minute and 34 back. Max Newman looking fantastic as he twists and turns. He's coming down the chute. He sees the finish line. He checks his shoulder as well. It's an outstanding run for Max Newman. I beat the rocks for Max Newman. A wonderful day out.
do we have a new superstar in middle course racing? Christian Blumenfeld turns the corner. He'll see the shoot now. Well, he's beaten Jan Fredino. He's beaten Alistair Brownlee. It's a fantastic race from him. Didn't quite have enough turf to make up the time on Max Newman. But he goes over to congratulate him. A fantastic performance by the Aussie. Yeah. And of course, Blumenfeld was going to be there. Unbelievable. And there is our remaining podium placer, Magnus Ditlev. The great Dane is bringing that through. Yeah, such a strong performance for him. I think a really good swim. He just made the moves on the bike. He really, you know, he caused that group to all come together and uh, just didn't quite have the legs there to stay with him on the run, but uh, still an incredibly solid performance. Fantastic race for Magnus Ditlev. And we might be expecting a sprint finish here from Fredino and Jason West. It's Fredino over the line first. Fourth Great position. to have him back racing. Fourth position for him after 616 days away. The inaugural PTO European Open champion stands alongside. I'm not actually going to repeat what you said as you cross the finish line because we are a very much a family show, but what I will say is it seems to mean quite a lot. Give us a little reaction to today. Yeah, I hope there are no microphones at the finish there, but um, no, I just I just think uh, you don't get many chances to to race these guys, you know, like, they, there's what made triathlon, and uh, it's just a privilege to go up against, you know, Jan, Ali, Christian, they literally made the sport for us guys, so... Um, yeah, it's quite quite emotional, but um, yeah, it's, I love racing and uh, to race like that with Christian breathing down your neck is um, it's just literally what you live for. So congratulations once again to Max Newman. He bags a hundred thousand dollars and all the bragging rights here in Ibiza as well. Coming in at number two was Christian Blumenfeld and filling up that podium was Magnus Dietlev. We have people's consensus goat, is he? Uh, maybe, I think so. Jan Fredino, number four. Jason West with a blistering run in at five. Alistair Brownlee, the legend, in at six. Daniel Beckergaard, a great race from here at seven. Ben Knutz in eighth. Carl Smith, ninth. And Aaron Royal in at ten. And there is our leader, Lucy Charles Barkley, who is aiming her bike towards town and the transition zone. Well, she'll park her cube and she'll put on her runners and take to the streets of Ibiza. And that's where things get really interesting. Yeah, I can't wait to see how this run plays out. It's just exciting to see these, these great runners in the field. The, the runners that were a threat, that gentle Annie Haug, they're moving forward. They're in the mix. They're not too far away from that front. So Lucy Charles Barkley just gobbling up the tarmac as she brings about the bike leg, her bike leg to a close. Just a kilometre to go now for her. Starting to strip off the Velcro. Let's get her feet ready. Yeah, the feet go on top of the shoes. Just anything for her to save an extra couple of seconds in transition. You don't want to be running uh, through transition in bike shoes. Yes. <laughs> it would not be the most comfortable thing Skating to do. Skating through transition on bike shoes. Yeah, every second counts, I would imagine, at this point. I think every second counts when she knows the calibre of runners behind her. She really doesn't want to give it up. And like we saw in the men's race, it can come down. It can get really close and every second yeah. is going to be important. There's Annie Haug on the bike. Great to get a shot of her. So she's currently in ninth, but she's had a really good ride. And you were talking earlier about her form as well. So she's always someone that you've got to keep an eye on. Oh, always. I and mean, we know she's got a good run. And the two races she's had already this year, fantastic runs, but incredible bike performances too. 
So Lucy is in transition. She'll be hoping for a smooth process through T2. Quite nice to be the first one in. There's no other bikes there. Quite easy to find your spot. <laughs> Doesn't it look tidy yeah. as well? <laughs> Very tidy. Socks on first. Yeah, she's got a bit of room. She's got a bit of a buffer to the others, so I guess she can put on the socks, but it is a personal decision. Some people don't bother, but she uh, has made the decision. She'll be more comfortable. And out she goes. Great bike there by Lucy Charles Barkley. She maintains her lead. And she's had no one see. She hasn't seen anyone the whole day. She's only would have seen the athletes on the turnaround, but they've always been over a minute behind her. It's been a lonely ride. Has indeed. A lonely race when you consider the swim as well. Yeah, she's been on her own pretty much since the first 20 metres of the swim, I guess. <laughs> and no one's uh, been in within touching distance. She's desperate to get back to the top spot. Yeah, she really wants that world number one back. She had it for a short time. She really enjoyed it. <laughs> Would like to have it back. And she's going to do everything possible this year to, to get it back. One of the most popular triathletes, men or women. She does a fantastic job of, again, documenting, much like some of her peers do, but she's got a very strong YouTube channel. It's a fascinating insight. I think it's her sister who's behind the camera there. So you see that the guard is down and you get to, you get to know her a little bit better. Yeah, she's really open and really fun on there. You really do get a good insight into what it's like to be a professional triathlete. Get to see her set up at home with the sauna and the ice bath as well. Very jealous of that <laughs> yeah. setup that she's got. That's Paula Finley, Ashley Gentle. They're racking near each other, being kind of two of the top ranked athletes. India Lee there. Lottie Vilnes, Beck Clark, they're all in. It's funny how there's just a different process. So people, it, it, what they attack tackle first yeah it's very different and I think it's, it's something that you would practice um, definitely in short course trading the mentally kind of going through it what list of what order are you going to do things which way is you going to do like helmet off first shoes off so yeah you do cut down your own kind of routine Annie Haug might be the one to watch because she's closing in on Ashley Gentle already moved up to third position she started the bike, I think she started the run in ninth, so a big, That's big move so incredible. far. Incredible. And just remind us how this run course works as well, Helen. Yeah, so it's an 18 kilometer run. They started at transition and they've kind of wound through the streets to the old town. And now they're going to complete six, two and a half kilometer laps. And then they're going to finish not by transition, but over here on the port. India Lee and Paula Finley make up the top five. I've got a feeling that that's going to shuffle. That's an incredible race with India Lee. I mean, we expect to see Paula Findlay up there. She's a regular kind of in the top five on the podium. But India Lee, this is a big breakthrough for her to be this high up in the field. I've heard she's in good shape. I heard she's been running some PBs earlier this year. Um, she takes part in cross country events as well. She does a really big range of kind of cross training as well to support her triathlon work but yeah really good breakthrough for her at the moment if she can maintain that position yeah i think she came seventh at the uk inter counties a couple of months ago she does some cyclocross races as well oh, this is a moment here isn't it daniela reef about to be lapsed by annie haug wow Here we go, Annie Howe with Lucy Charles Barkley in her sights. She is closing down the gap. There's only a few strides between them now. Is this a pivotal moment in the race? Will we see Annie Howe just kick on from here or will Lucy Charles Barkley try to respond? We have about 10 kilometers to go before we hit that finish line. And it's an acknowledgement from both athletes but Germany's Annie Haug marches forward into the lead. Oh, lovely. like so lovely to see that respect between the athletes as well. Like that gives me goosebumps, just that respect that these women have for each other. 
just out on the course and Annie respects how Lucy races and Lucy respects just that run they have. They also have the same coach as well so I presume there's a, that little kind of, I know they don't train together but there is that kind of acknowledgement that, that we're both kind of uh, together in this. And let's look at it again as Annie Haug elbows out. She closes down on Lucy Charles Barkley. And there's the acknowledgement. Lucy Charles Barkley, who led this race for so very long. She was picked off by Annie Haug. And now she's having to deal with Ashley Gentle. Look for her to make her move. There she goes. And she does surge. Yeah, straight she went in front wide. and straight into second. There goes Ashley Gentle. Strong run from her as predicted. And Lucy Charles Barkley drops down to third. They're bringing this one home. The inaugural PTO European Tour race here in Ibiza. Annie Haug. Not long to go now before she'll meet the cheers. There must be a sign of a smile now. I'm sure she's got a smile on her face. She's almost there. Oh, it's just been wonderful to watch. And just the way that she attacks the tarmac is quite incredible. Yeah, there's a wave. Here we go. She makes that corner. It has been one of the most celebrated fields in women's triathlon. But Annie Haug has run through to win the PTO European Tour race here in Ibiza. What a run. Wow, just what a performance. Absolutely incredible. Just demolished the field on the run. She's, she's, I mean, there's people running from behind, but she just got herself in the perfect position then just executed that amazing run. Brilliant stuff. As she just gets herself set, she's about to meet the cameras. We were all a bit nervous that we heard that there was an illness, that she might not be making the line this morning. Well, she certainly loves this 100 kilometre race, proving time, time and time again how very strong she is as she enjoys bringing it home here in Ibiza. It is second place for Ashley Gentle. Congratulations to her. And she goes over, or Annie Howe comes to meet her at the finish line. Beautiful stuff. They can now enjoy the, the sights and sounds here in Ibiza. The work is done. The work is done. I think they need to lie down. <laughs> Maybe before going out clubbing later. And here's Lucy Charles Barkley to take third here in Ibiza. What an effort it's been from her today. Led the swim, led the bike. And it was a tough run with those ladies in the field. Yeah, I mean, Lucy Charles Barkley, no matter where she finishes, she's always had an impact on the race. She's such, a, just every time she's in a race, you know kind of that swim's gonna be fast and it always causes things to happen for later on in the course of the race. Yes, the women's PTO European Open champion, Anna Haug, is alongside. I, I, it's an extraordinary achievement, what you've just done, and yet you have made it look absolutely effortless, almost like you hit cruise control. How comfortable was that, and what does it mean to you to cross that line in first today? Oh, it's not comfortable at all. I mean, I compete against the best in the world, and that really pushes me to get the best out of me. I mean, you need the best in the world to get to see how good you are. And um, yeah, I had just a fantastic race, I must say. I mean, my swim was okay, I would say, and I felt very strong on the bike, and I knew I can run pretty quick, but you never know. I mean, it's the first race of the year against the best in the world. You never know where you are. It's always a box of chocolate, but um, yeah, I tried my best and yeah, always keep strong in the head. I think you always have to believe that you can make it. It was Annie Haug's day. What a sensational performance from her. That consistency is key. It is paying off. And you see there, the top spot of 102. 55. So Ashley Gentle coming in second, Lucy Charles Barkley followed by Emma Pallant Brown, Paula Finley, Tamara Jewett, the two Canadians, India Lee with a 
A great seventh, Luisa Baptista making up eighth. This was a stacked field. Well, we promised you an old school classic in Ibiza and wow, have our athletes delivered. What a weekend it has been. We've got new rivalries emerging. We've got old scores still to be settled and you can bet your bottom dollar that the rest of the PTO tour this year is going to be unmissable. Therefore, we shall look forward to your company in Milwaukee for the PTO US Open in early August. But for now, from all of the team, it's goodbye.